Hi folks, welcome back. In this video, we shall take a look between containers and virtual machines. So what we are trying to do is to understand the containers properly, we'll try to make use of the knowledge that we have about virtual machines and we'll apply the same knowledge to understand the containers in a better manner. So virtual machines have been um, around for, for uh, quite some time. So I believe a lot of folks who are watching this video are already aware of it. But we'll uh, just do a, a quick summary of uh, the virtual machines. So how, what, what does a virtual machine look like? So a virtual machine would have a, a layer of infrastructure. So consider the infrastructure as your hardware layer. Now this could be a simple laptop at your home or it could be a server at your office. On top of the infrastructure is your host operating system. So the kind of operating system that you would install on your laptop or on your uh, say uh, server uh, is your uh, host operating system. So in our case, let's say I have a Mac laptop. So my host operating system would be a Mac OS. Now on top of the host operating system goes a layer of hypervisor. See, remember with virtual machine, my aim is to run multiple operating systems. And that is what is provided by hypervisor. So hypervisor is a piece of software which helps to run multiple virtual machines in a way it helps to virtualize your infrastructure or the hardware layer. Okay, on top of a hypervisor, as I said, you can have multiple operating systems. Let's say you install a guest operating system. It could be, uh, say, a Linux operating system. Uh, now, every operating system uh, would need some kind of binaries uh, and uh, some kind of library files. And let's say on top of it, we have created an application one and we call it as the app one. So this could be uh, considered, let's say you've created, uh, uh, you have installed a Linux operating system. On top of it, you have installed, say, a MySQL server, Oracle database, and we call it app one. Similarly, we had, let's say, a Linux operating system. We install a Solaris operating system. This is uh, the guest operating system number two. It has binaries, library files, and we call it the app two. And then uh, comes the second, the third one, and we call it app three. Okay, so this is how a virtual machine would behave. So in a way, it's actually virtualizing uh, the infrastructure uh, layer. Now let's take a look at what happens in a Docker or Docker containers. Again, uh, we start with the infrastructure layer. So infrastructure layer, as I said, uh, consider as your laptop, uh, like say your um, normal Mac laptop uh, or, or, or server. Now on top of uh, uh, the infrastructure, we have the host operating system. It's, it's quite similar till now. Let's say we have the Mac OS on top of our um, infrastructure layer. Now comes the Docker daemon. So here, here is the here here is the difference. So over here we had a hypervisor. So hypervisor was a piece of software which was virtualizing the hardware, but Docker daemon is a kind of a software which is virtualizing your operating system. Because what happens with Docker daemon, you don't have to install multiple operating systems but the multiple containers that you would be creating would be sharing the same operating system. So let's say the host operating system was Mac OS. So they all would be sharing the Mac OS or it could be a layer of a, say Linux operating system as a host operating system. As I said, uh, in uh, Docker containers, the containers would actually be sharing the same operating system or the, the OS kernel. So each of these containers would be having its own set of binaries and library files. So as you can see, uh, we will have like app one, two, three, and all of these would be having different set of binaries and library files, but they still would be sharing the same operating system. As I said, it is app one, app two, app three. So now it becomes the complete picture of how the Docker container architecture looks like wherein we have the layer of infra on top of it goes a host os then comes the docker daemon what docker daemon does docker daemon tries to virtualize the operating system and on top of it we put a layer of different containers each container would have its own set of binaries library files and they would all be making use of the same host operating system or the os kernel now uh, when you talk about uh, the advantages of um, uh, Docker as compared to virtual machine, the, the best uh, thing is uh, that the Docker containers are considered to be really lightweight. Why they are lightweight? They are actually lightweight because of this whole layer of operating system which is missing. 
and that makes a docker daemon or a docker container a lightweight component because you're not installing a new layer of our operating system so all you're using is you're actually sharing your operating system or the host operating system and the second point is the boot up uh, let's say uh, you have to boot up your uh, vm um, so you, you might notice that sometimes it does take time because the os has to boot up and it has to go through the entire boot sequence but not anymore in case of docker containers they they are like very quick as soon as you run a container it takes uh, it looks at the image and based on the image uh, at runtime using docker daemon it will actually run your container now oh, all it is doing is it's simply uh, making use of the existing operating system and it doesn't have to boot up any operating system because it's already booted up for you so these are the main advantages which makes uh, uh, a container or docker container different from the vms or the virtual machines thanks for watching guys